Hi everyone and welcome to Natasha's Lips, Tips and Great Flips. I'm your host, Natasha Jamieson. Our show focuses on wellness and shares beneficial insight for living an exceptional life. This is my passion and I hope that I inspire you to live your own. We have a very special show for you today as we welcome Lisa Julian. She is the CEO of Good Skin Cosmetics, a minimalist vegan skincare brand. We'll be talking about the challenges and successes of being an entrepreneur and the importance of investing in yourself. Also joining us today is the one and only celebrity matchmaker and dating expert, Carmelia Ray. She is the star of the hot TV series, Mom vs. Matchmaker, and she is here to talk about the digital dating movement, why meeting in real life is declining, and of course her expert advice on dating. We have a lot to talk about. But first, we are talking trends with my partner in crime, Gail Harrington. Welcome to the show. As always, Gail, I love having you here. Hi, Natasha. I love being here. Okay, good. That makes two of us. <laughs> so we are talking two trends today, mm -hmm. trans transformative hair products and lash lifting kits. So let's talk about lash lifting kits. Okay. Because I want to know your insight on this, like I'm dying to know. So basically, it's like a perm for your eyelashes. And that's what we're talking about, where if you're kind of sick and tired of getting like, you know, those little individual, you know, fillers, like uh, lash fillers, mm -hmm. you can, you know, in mascaras of all kinds, you can kind of, you know, maybe invest in perming solutions, this kind of kits that are an actual perm. Okay, so what kind of an investment are we talking about? We're looking at 80 to $150, okay. lasting about six weeks. Okay, with a little bucks break. a week, maybe? Maybe. Okay. Don't make me do math right now. <laughs> and about two week window right. of like giving your eyelashes a break. Okay. But basically, it's just like a hairstylist would set your hair in a perm rod. Mm -hmm. You're going to use, they're going to use a silicone rod to, you know, create the shape. Mm -hmm. Of course, it's customized, customized, you know, the different type of curl, you know, based on individual, like, you know, desire right. and demand. Right. And they're going to set it like a perm you know, and then neutralize it. And basically you're not allowed to wear mascara or, you know, have anything disrupt these ammonium thioglycolate bonds, which I'm not gonna get into, it's right. very chemistry, but basically you want them to set so that the shape is there for about 24 right. hours. So no eye makeup for 24 hours? Right. I'm out. I know, I was just, I felt it. I felt it coming, I know. I set you up the wrong way, I think. <laughs> I should have said, you're gonna look, you know, bright eyed and, you know, wide eyed and it's, you know, you're not gonna need mascara if you don't want to see, I should have done that. Right. But, Still? But no, still, I'm thinking 25 bucks a week. And of course, this is definitely don't try this at home. This is a salon service, of course. Right. You know, I'm glad that you pointed that yeah. out. You don't want to be yeah. messing with anything to do with your no. eyes. You need to be, you know, with a trusted professional. Yes. They're going to do a consultation. They're going to take their time. They're going to, you know, analyze, you know, your shape, like what you're desi mm -hmm. like, you know, desiring. Because everybody has like a different effect that they're looking for. Some yes. might want it a little bit curlier or, you know, more upswept than right, others, or, like right. a different type of a and lift. does it damage the eyelashes the way that a perm can damage your hair? It doesn't. It is a, a lot gentler okay. than that, but it is like the same process right. that is involved. And they're going to send you home with an oil to constantly like maintain it in the evening so that they're not fragile and so bright. So like everything else, they're May still maintenance involved right maintenance yes. is everything but you know some of the effects can be wonderful for some people like that have you know very minimal lashes mm -hmm. like it can mm -hmm. really open your eyes up it's really kind of a great thing i might want to try it i don't know but but i'm not i'm not like you i mean i'll take one for the team and i won't wear makeup well, how about if you take hours. one for the team and again, we'll report back on this Okay, afterwards. sounds good. I like that. Okay, so we're going to talk about transformative hair products. So everything that's happening in the skincare, you know how they have dual, dual duty? Mm -hmm. These um, skin intellectuals, which is the consumer nowadays, yes. are demanding natural ingredients, food-based ingredients, yes. and more dual products yeah. in hair care now. Yes, and they have the internet. They had the internet, so everything's so. at their fingertips. Yes, exactly. They're pushing these lines to kind of be a little bit more open and transparent yeah. about these ingredients. And I think it's really, really great. So we're looking at basically dry shampoos that, you know, have a tint to them. Mm -hmm. We're looking at different pastes that, you know, can have, you know, a leave-in treatment effect. Right. A variety of different... And scalp therapy, scalp which is therapy the biggest is thing these days. Tell us why that's such a big because deal. Because it all starts from a healthy scalp. Right. 
everything starts from, you know, overall health mm -hmm. and a healthy scalp. Mm -hmm. So if your hair is in some way compromised, it can be traced back to a scalp. So, you know, these natural, you know, products, you know, silicidic, there's some silicidic acid, but detoxifiers. For exfoliation again. Gentle, is, gentle yes. exfoliation. Turmeric, you know, moringan oil, you know, chamomile. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's a variety of different things based on your needs. So basically, it wouldn't be that you would be looking at the ingredient. It would say volumizing for right. scalp therapy, for, you know, Hydration, so that's basically what you're going to be looking so again, at. So check with a professional. Sure, to help guide you for sure, yes. absolutely. Yes. So, but it's not going to be. I don't want people to think it's going to be so difficult to identify what works for them. It right. will be very easy. Right. You know, if your hair is very dry, you know, you're going to go to that section that has moisture, hydration, right. with the benefits of these food-based, mm -hmm. you know, ingredients. Mm -hmm. Which the whole movement is going that way. And that's where we came from. We all have some version of the Ukrainian grandmother telling us to put milk on our faces to exfoliate, yes. putting chamomile leaves yes. in rainwater through our hair yes. to lighten. A variety of different so things. So we're going back to what we used to do. Yes, more natural based. Yes. I mean, it's it's a great alternative for people so that they feel good about what they're putting in their body and on their body. And Same thing with earth. hair. And on the earth. Like what yes. mark are we leaving right behind? Yes. Absolutely. So I think this is very, very exciting. I love the d d double duty. Mm -hmm. And I also want to say like there's um, talk, like detox Detoxifying and um, repairing and restructuring right. shampoos, and also for color services, right. these work on a on the molecular level. So basically, if you have some damaged hair, you know it can repair it because we can repair hair. This is huge. It's so huge, and even as stylists, you know there's you know different bonding agents that we add to our formulation. But, you know, we can't help if Kiki went to buy, you know, a box color somewhere and fried her hair. Even Jesus can't help you there. So we need to cut that out. But for the most part, you know, we can add these agents to lift you more safely and to restructure, rebond the hair. Right. Same thing with these products. They can actually repair and reverse damages, right. pollutants, free radicals, all sorts of things that, you know, affect our hair, really. I mean, it's, it's really literally mimicking skincare and everything else, wellness. And it's life changing. Natural, absolutely. So that is it for trends. It always goes by so fast, I think. I know. It just flies by, wow. but that's okay. You'll we'll be back, again. you'll be back. We'll do it again okay. for sure. And up next, we speak with matchmaker Carmelia Ray. Stay with us. Natasha's Lips, Tips and Great Flips is sponsored by AMMA Ajax Mixed Martial Arts Academy. Offering classes in Muay Thai and Brazilian Jiu Jitsu for all men and women. Sign up now for your free one month membership. Also offering Women's Strength and Conditioning Body Blast Boot Camp. Includes a one week free trial. St. Nadala Macedonian Orthodox Church. Located in Ajax, Ontario. Offering banquet hall facilities for your weddings, celebrations, and special events, accommodating up to 250 guests. Welcome back. Joining us now is celebrity matchmaker, dating expert, and star of the show Mom vs. Matchmaker, the stunning Carmelia Ray. Welcome to the show, Carmelia. Hi, thank you for having me. My pleasure. I'm so excited to have you on our show today because in the modern world, our hectic lives have caused our love life to be placed on the back burner. The movement towards social media apps increasing singles to, that are giving up on meeting people in real life. On that note, we have a lot to talk about. <laughs> yes, we do. We have a lot to talk about. So, Carmelia, I'm so curious as how you became a matchmaker because it's not every day that you get to meet Carmelia, yeah. the matchmaker. I, I've been a matchmaker. <laughs> almost three decades wow. so I actually applied to an ad in 1992 believe it or not this is before Facebook right. and match.com and to work in a call center and my job was to speak to singles about matchmaking and introduce them to a dating service at the time it was called together dating and uh, loved it so much that it became my lifetime career and a great <laughs> career at that, I would say. Yes. So how does a coach and matchmaker prepare people to successfully make a love match? Because I'd never really heard about matchmakers before that you could actually support and coach people. Mm -hmm. I didn't know what it entailed. Well, I mean, there's a lot of preparation for dating in that, as you said, but most people don't know that you can get this kind of support. Yes. And then a lot of people haven't done a lot, en enough work on themselves That's true. to know who are they, what are they looking for, 
do they have bad dating habits? I mean, there are things that people do and say in a date that I hear on a constant basis and I'm like, oh, there's better ways to, yeah. to deal with that, right? So the other preparation as well is to have a great attitude about it. Right. Sometimes people enter the dating world too quickly mm -hmm. and they're still not over or haven't healed oh, from their previous relationship. Oh, so they bring all of that into the new relationship and it's just a recipe for disaster. disaster. So yeah. do you help them in turn deal with those issues? Like do you recognize them and then may maybe suggest like that they do therapy or do you address it yourself? Yeah, I mean I don't, if, some, if I believe somebody needs a therapy or it goes beyond the scope of my help, right. uh, of course I'll refer them to mm -hmm. or recommend that. But for the most part, I try to get re people really clear on what their relationship goals are and then also introduce them to all the different ways they can meet people because right. it's online dating and speed dating and networking and so many different ways to meet singles that people aren't aware of. Well, that's exactly, uh, I was just gonna say, <laughs> we mentioned earlier earlier that dating and meeting someone special has certainly changed it over has. the many years, and I'm sure you can agree to that. Online dating movement has singles moving away from meeting people in real life. Can you tell us why this is happening? I think, um, you mean, you were saying online dating moves people away from, from meeting in real life. Absolutely. Yes, uh, it's almost like information overload it? and it's uh, choice paralysis. Oh. You know, there's m so many dating sites and dating apps and which one's right for me. And That's then right. people get stuck on these online dating sites, texting back and forth, when the purpose of this technology is to, to connect you to get offline. But okay. people just get this FOMO and there's somebody better and they swipe, just get, swipe. they swipe, swipe. They have multiple conversations and they don't nurture um, relationships that could form. They just get, go on to the next one. They end up having very superficial okay. dialogue, right? Yeah, absolutely. So why do you think too many options can cause singles to be overwhelmed and not communicate, you know, for fear of meeting the wrong person? Because it is, it is a fear for some people. It is a fear, yes. You don't want to put yourself out there, then you're afraid, and then you're, you know. Well, part of that, again, the prep is they don't know what they're looking for. Okay. And they haven't set very strong boundaries for what they're looking for. So when they're out there looking, it's just like they just see a bunch of men or right. a bunch of women. They're not sticking to who they really need and want, that they, they leave their net so wide okay. open. When you start to become clear, you know exactly the kind of person you're looking for and you won't entertain conversations with people that go outside of what you truly value. So what kind of questions do you ask people then? When what are your relationship goals? Okay. You know, it's interesting when someone says they're on a date, but he doesn't know if he wants to have kids oh. and this person wants to have children. Okay, then that's Why the are criteria. you going to? Yeah, that's a criteria, okay. right? Or this person's going to quit smoking. Mm -hmm. And they said they want to smoke. We know how hard it is to, right, of course, to, to, quit, to quit smoking and those kinds of things, right? Yeah. So give us your insights on how fear and being afraid of putting yourself out there can stop singles from even asking somebody out. Oh, I think fear is one of the biggest. It is blocks for people or I'll even reverse that and say a lack of courage whether mm -hmm. it's you know fearful or courage they don't have they have too much fear and not mm -hmm. enough courage um, you know it stops you because you never explore opportunities and most people actually regret the things they don't do that's true instead I'd rather make a mistake yeah. and fail forward yeah. and a lot of people are just will just be in their comfort zone and will won't step out of that can that be fixed of course it can be fixed, but they have to be willing. They have to be willing. And they've got to not be afraid it. of rejection. Right. You're going to get like, what, 10 no's before you get a yes? That's, that's I've true. worked in sales and marketing my entire life. Yes. So, you know, for someone to say no, it just says no, not now. That's right. right? Oh, that's a great way yeah. to look at it. No, not now. Exactly. And I deserve better. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Absolutely. I don't know. Uh, dating can be very frustrating and discouraging for people hoping to find love. What are some of the factors that we need to be mindful of when we're searching? My, um, well, again, having clarity and purpose for dating is important. Mm -hmm. And also knowing your communication style, mm -hmm. right? And what do you want to put out there mm -hmm. in the world, both from your public image and also your social media profile? Because as, as soon as someone finds out about you, they are Googling of you. Of course they are. So you yes. want to make sure that you Google yourself and that you are comfortable with the footprint that you're leaving in the world. Yes. When we come back, we're going to talk more with Carmelia Ray. Stay with us. Natasha's Lips, Tips, and Great Flips is sponsored by Synchronicity Durham.
by collaborating within each level of the community, the main purpose of Synchronicity Durham is to empower every open-minded citizen in Durham region with the tools and resources to achieve their greatest dreams, goals, and passions. Welcome back. We are talking to the queen of matchmaking, the one and only Carmelia Ray. She is here to give us her expert insight to increase your chances of making a relationship match. Now, Carmelia, I want to ask you this right out of the gate. What is the number one thing that most men and women lie about on a profile and why? Oh, great question. <laughs> um, men will typically lie about height and money, financial stability. Money. Those okay. are the two things okay. that men lie about because those are the things that matter to women these days. That's the why? Yeah. Okay. Women will lie about age and weight. <sighs> so they'll knock a few years off and they'll take off a few pounds. Yeah. And that's, that's and men will add a couple of inches Does for height. Does it make a difference, <laughs> do you think, on your expert opinion? It makes a like difference. Like if somebody's, like, you know, not tall enough or they don't have enough money. It Does makes, it make a huge difference? It, it, Every criteria makes a difference depending on the person, okay. but it, what makes a difference is when you're not being truthful. That's true. And when you meet somebody and you have this expectation and they're completely opposite. That's right. That's not the best way to lead no. a relationship, no. an introduction. Absolutely. Let's talk about uh, the very first thing we need to address before going on a date. Guide us through this, because a lot of people, maybe they've been widowed for a long time or divorced or they just haven't been in a relationship and, you know, you know how it is, everything is moving so quickly, you might for, like lose your kind of mojo. <laughs> okay, so you're saying what's the first thing they should yeah. focus Keep, on? Yeah. Um, like in the date scenario or just p in part of dates, preparation? Yeah. Well, part on a date, I think people need to know that the first date should be really light. So I have a lot of uh, feedback from clients going on first date and it feels like a horrible interview. Oh. Or this person just happened is like psychoanalyzing the person oh, wow. or they're talking about subjects that are, f that are for like date five and six, like sex talk and oh, wow. ex talk. Like I. No right. sex talk or ex talk no. on a first date. Yes. Keep it light. Keep it it's light. about chemistry. Have, have fun. Have fun with it. Yeah. And get to know the person a little bit more. Yes. Don't have one sided maybe conversation. Sure. Just really get to you want to make sure you're, you're having this back well, and forth dialogue that we're having. Yes. Um, and if you're doing all the talking, ask a question. So make sure you're prepared to ask really great, open ended, light questions. <laughs> Open ended light yes. questions. Well that's great advice. Why is it important to have a love list? So we've gone on a date and we have kind of like a criteria. Is this firm, flexible? I think it's really, you know, there's two sides of the of, a, of an opinion here for most matchmakers. Some people are like, forget the list because who you end up with in many cases is somebody that does not have these things on your list. Right. I think what's important to note are the values that you have in place and your deal breakers, right? The, the absolute must that you need to have. Okay. Um, and then of course the things that are negotiable are things like the, the height and culture and sure. ethnicity and things like that that are, or interests. You don't have to have all shared right. interests in order to have a great relationship. So you just say be a bit more open Absolutely. some of the other, the non-negotiables. Yeah, I think when it, comes, open. when it comes to dating, being open is fair. Frequency is important. A lot of times, people, singles will not go out with somebody unless they're 99.9% oh, wow. on, on their, their list. list or whatever. Yeah. So you'll end up staying home more often than not. Oh, gosh, fair point, <laughs> yeah. fair point. In order to make a positive first impression, what is the suggestion for singles on a date? Positive. Posit positive first impression. First thing is eye contact. Sure. Leave the cell phone at home. Make sure that your your posture is open mm -hmm. and that if we're having dialogue, you're turning to that yes. person. A smile is the best yes. accessory that you can yes. wear. Yes. And always clean, pressed clothing. It doesn't even have to be, oh, okay. even if you're not sure about style, as long as you look like you've put yourself together, put your shirt is ironed, put some yeah. effort in there. So as far as um, you were saying, with like respect to making like a first impression and body language. Some yes. people may not know that, that they're turning slightly away yes, or exactly. you know, is like a closed hands body language. Folded. Who wants to go on a Nobody date with your hands with folded? Grouchy. No, <laughs> grouchy pants. Yeah, exactly. Negative Nelly, like yeah. no, we don't want that. Oh, ne a positive talk and negative talk. Don't right. talk about what all your bad negative experiences. You're not here, this person does not want to hear about your last seven bad dates, yeah. right? Or your failed marriage or whatever that case is so sometimes people who are single who have not 
been on a date for a long time. Oh, this is somebody who's willing to listen. I'm going to tell right. them everything about oh, my life. Oh, I see. Again, Sensor not first date no, conversation. Not first yeah. date. Wow. <laughs> There's a lot. So if you're interested in somebody, yes. what should we be thinking? And um, how do we kind of subtly flirt maybe? Like, you know, just to let them know that there's an interest that you know sure. they're enjoying their time like you know communicating I'm, with you connecting with you i think laughter is the best evidence that you're having, having a, good a good time, time. the constant smiling yes. i mean women can you know play with their hair there is that hair yes. flip that you can use and for men it's about positive posturing and leaning in now be mindful that they're open to these lean-ins because you want to have a respectful personal oh, space sure. But if I liked you and I wanted to get to know you more and show that, I might naturally. I might nudge my chair in a little right. bit. Or if you're talking, oh, that's right. so funny. You a know, do a little, touch. I yeah. do a little touch, yeah. but not in areas that would, would right. you know, not near the breast, not so near the back. So hands are yeah. okay, or hands are maybe? okay. Shoulders perfectly yes. fine. So um, I always ask my guests the takeaway. Yes. You can help a lot of people. We know this. This is why I wanted you so badly to come on my show. Thank you. Please help us. For those people that are really wanting to connect with someone, let's say the top three things, Carmelia. The top three things is stop thinking and start doing. So take an action. It's one thing to think about it, but thinking doesn't get you anywhere. Mm -hmm. Now, so take action. Don't overthink. I think okay, that's two things. It's a fine things. line, yeah. right? It's a fine line. Yeah. The other thing is get a support system mm -hmm. because... With, with anybody who knows that they're the kind of person that won't, like they're lacking courage, if you have an accountability partner, whether it's your daughter, your friend, um, a, a dating coach if you want to hire one, have somebody that is accountable to you so that they know you're taking an action, okay. right? So have an accountability partner. And lastly, um, don't, like, just have a positive attitude and be in the practice of being grateful. Yes. So when something doesn't turn out your way, learn stop, the lesson. Yeah, learn right? the lesson. Don't blame yourself. No, just move, move from on. It. Dust yourself move off. Move from it. Move on. Thank you so much, Carmelia. Thank you for coming on the show <laughs> and for so all your expert here. insights. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you. And up next, we speak with Lisa Julian. Stay with us. Natasha's lips, tips, and great flips is sponsored by. St. Nadala Macedonian Orthodox Church, located in Ajax, Ontario, offering banquet hall facilities for your weddings, celebrations, and special events, accommodating up to 250 guests. Invictus Equality. We are the mistresses and the masters of our gender equality destiny. Welcome back. Here with us now is Lisa Julian. She is a CEO of Good Skin Cosmetics, a minimalist vegan skincare brand for deeper shades of melanin. She is here today to talk about how investing in herself as an entrepreneur created the exceptional life that she had always envisioned. Lisa, welcome to the show. Thanks, Natasha, for having me. Absolutely, my pleasure. I absolutely love sharing people's stories on our show because it always reaches the people that need to hear it the most. When someone achieves their dreams, something very special happens to those that hear their story. We believe we can achieve ours too. It's not where you start, it's where you decide to go. Absolutely. So Lisa, let's start out by having the conversation. How did you come from being a former, former spa owner to having your own skincare line? I mean, that is... Whoa. Yeah. You know what? I had a, a beautiful spa called the Chakra Spa for about 10 years, and I absolutely loved it because I was always into organic, natural, yes. um, learning to heal yourself from, from within outwardly. Um, and then when I transitioned, I, see, I sort of saw myself um, wanting, ne needing to find what my next passion would be. Right. Not that I was not passionate about the spa, of course. but I needed to grow and I, I realized that. So, um, and having the background as a, an esthetician, a makeup artist. It's huge. Yeah, and I uh, was always like on the hunt for a really good moisturizer for my skin yes. and I was totally disappointed time after time. I mean, I grew up in Toronto. Mm -hmm. I love Toronto and multiculturalism, but I just felt like my shade was being, and the shades of other uh, women and men of color were being ignored. Oh, wow. So that's one of the reasons why I invested in mm -hmm. learning as much as I can mm -hmm. about melanin and how it affects the skin and mm -hmm. how you can um, strengthen it and protect it to give you the beautiful skin that you want. But your skincare brand is for the masses. It's not just for. 
Well, women men, of color. No. So yes. it it's primarily meant for darker skin tones. Okay. Okay. So it doesn't mean that you can't it's use it. It's beneficial for all. Right. Because I have customers that are of course. all over the I just the want map. to make sure that yeah. that was very clear. Yeah, for sure. Can you share with us the most interesting story that happened during your startup? Because there's always some great stories, interesting, funny stories kind of eye-opening stories. I always love to hear that. Yeah, uh, I, I, I guess one of the stories that, or one of the things that happened to me was um, my daughter, I had said something to my daughter about her, um, you know, really need to invest in yourself and yeah. stop thinking about others and think about yourself right. and be selfish with yourself. And then after she said, well, well you're always doing stuff for people and giving your time oh. and giving it away. And I'm like, you know what? You're right. She threw it in your face, She threw it she? in my face. <laughs> and I'm like, from that on, time on, I started um, practicing to say no. Yes. Right? The because power of no. The power of no, because it was like I had this need to say yes. I had this need to, to be, you know, for you to like me. I had mm -hmm. this need. And it's like it wasn't, uh, it wasn't, um, it was coming from a, not a good place. Yes, no, it never does, absolutely. Yeah. The path to success does not come without its many challenges and roadblocks, we know this. What are some of the obstacles that you had along the way and how did you overcome, overcome them? Um, I think one of the obstacles that I had was just trying to figure out what it is that I wanted to do. And I basically just took it back to what I love, which is um, I'm also an instructor for makeup. Mm -hmm. And I, I teach women, immi new immigrants to the country, or women just going back into the work field, right. um, basic makeup. But in the long run, that basic makeup was a confidence builder. Yes. Because they... It put them in a, a place of being comfortable with themselves mm -hmm. and understanding that your needs are my needs, my yes. needs are your needs. Yes. We're, we're all the same all yes. over. So that really um, inspired me to then kind of cre to create that yes. skincare line. That's, well, you're helping these incredible women, you know, kind of find purpose and like value in themselves, but none of us can achieve success without some help along the way. Who kind of did that for you? You know, I've always had my, uh, I've always focused my attention on the things that I love and the people that I love. Mm -hmm. And my family's been very supportive. Um, not all at the time that you want them to be. Yes, of course. However, I took it with love and I understood why they were doing sure. it. So once you understand the perspective of why that person's saying that to you, it doesn't affect you as much because you understand that they're only coming from a limited um, yes. perception of stuff, yes, of right? Course. Like when my mom would be like, you can work full time and make X amount of dollars. Why are you doing this? Why, why, why? I think I remember that conversation right? from my mother. <laughs> exactly. Sorry, mom. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yes. And that's only because yes. she understands that's right, of her course. own. Yes, of course. It was a right? different time and different yes. things were of value to raise a family. But we're living in a very different type of a, you, exactly. know, you know, era right now yeah. where unlimited opportunities, yeah. really. Yeah. You're only limited by your own beliefs beliefs and you what you can are. accomplish. So you this are. is huge. What was the inspiration behind creating this vegan skincare brand? Well, the brand was created because, again, I'm all about what you put inside your body, mm -hmm. what your body absorbs is yes. what comes out and what you see. Mm -hmm. And if you see something that is n you're not happy with, what does that do? It mm -hmm. just makes your whole body energy not happy mm -hmm. and everything else is sort of magnified in, in negativity. Mm -hmm. If you're able to feel good about yourself, to work out, to wear, you know, the mm -hmm. clothes you want to wear, to put on a good natural skincare product mm -hmm. and know that you're not damaging your body, you're not hurting yourself, you feel better, you, you smile better. better. And when you smile better, um, the, your aura changes. It does. Right? Yes. And you're more happy and you're drawn to, the people are drawn to That's you true. based on that. Yeah. So. so before we go, your quick three things, I always ask the takeaways takeaway, excuse me, I always ask the takeaway, so tell us your three things that the viewers can remember. Um, I think the, one of the things is to definitely um, get into a place of quietness mm -hmm. where you can listen to yourself and listen to that inner voice that is trying to guide you. Mm -hmm. So creating 
a healing environment. Mm -hmm. It could be, you know, a little corner in your room sure. where you can sit and just pray or meditate. It's very important yes. to feed the soul. The other thing I would say is definitely your, your body, yes. feed the body. So feed the body. as good as you, I mean, we're not perfect. No, nobody is. I am a sweet tooth, so yes. I okay. love sweet stuff. Yes. But I sort of like think of it as, okay, well, you know, I'm not gonna take away the thing that I love, no. but I'm just gonna be aware of the thing that I love. Well, I think that's a perfect place to end it. Thank you so much for being a Thank part of the you. show, Lisa. That's all the time that we have for today. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time. Natasha's Lips, Tips, and Great Flips is sponsored by AMMA Ajax Mixed Martial Arts Academy, offering classes in Muay Thai and Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu for all men and women. Sign up now for your free one-month membership. Also offering Women's Strength and Conditioning Body Blast Boot Camp includes a one-week free trial. St. Nadala Macedonian Orthodox Church, located in Ajax, Ontario offering banquet hall facilities for your weddings, celebrations, and special events, accommodating up to 250 guests. Invictus Equality. We are the mistresses and the masters of our gender equality destiny. Synchronicity Durham. By collaborating within each level of the community, the main purpose of Synchronicity Durham is to empower every open-minded citizen in Durham region with the tools and resources to achieve their greatest dreams, goals, and passions. Thank you.